हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर नंदन राव फ्रॉम यूनिटी हॉस्पिटल सूरत एंड आई स्पेशलाइज इन आर्थ्रोस्कोपिक सर्जरीज स्पोर्ट्स इंजुरी ट्रीटमेंट एंड जॉइंट प्रिजर्वेशन टुडे आई वुड बी स्पीकिंग ऑन पोस्ट्रोलैटरल कॉर्नर इंजुरीज एंड हाउ टू ट्रीट दैम इफेक्टिवली I would be presenting on posterolateral coronary injuries. My talk is divided into anatomy, the examination, the radiology findings and the finally the treatment part of posterolateral coronary injuries. So first let's have a look at anatomy of posterolateral coronary. Posterolateral coronary has static stabilizers and dynamic stabilizers. The static stabilizers amongst them the most important is the lateral collateral ligament. lateral collateral ligament it originates uh, just posterior and superior to the uh, lateral epicondyle and it inserts 8 mm posterior to the anterior border of fibula on its head the second important stabilizer is the popliteus it inserts into its popliteus groove the exact point is around 18.5 mm distal and anterior to the lcl femoral insertion mainly it works during hyperflexion the third most important stabilizer of the posterolateral complex is the popliteofibular ligament it originates from uh, the popliteus myotendinous junction and it inserts around 1.3 mm distal to the uh, fibular styloid there are two dynamic stabilizers of the uh, posterolateral corner one is the iliotibial band which inserts onto the gerdes tubercle it mainly works during extension to 30 degrees and you have the biceps femoris which inserts onto the fibular styloid below the attachment of the popliteofibular ligament this was the salient features of anatomy of the posterolateral corner now suppose if you have a posterolateral corner injury what are the examination findings in acute cases you will find a lateral ecchymosis swelling inability to bear weight and hyperextension and varus on weight bearing or in chronic cases you have varus thrust gait let's have a look at the clinical tests the two most prominent tests which you do are the varus stress test and the dial test one may also do a reverse pivot shift and a posterolateral torr test the varus stress test so you start off with 30 degrees of knee flexion and then you do it at 0 degrees more than 10 mm of opening is significant and if you have an opening at 30 degrees that means the fibular collateral ligament is torn whereas if it is opening at even 0 degrees along with the fibular collateral ligament the posterolateral corner and posterior capsule with one of the cruciate uh, ligaments is torn this is a video of a patient with an acl and a lcl tear and you will see significant opening on varus stress test the next test is the dial test so the patient is uh, made to lie prone then you do an external tibial rotation more than 10 degrees is significant so now if you have a dial test which is positive at 30 degrees it means the patient has a plc injury and along with that if he has a positive dial test at 90 degrees then he has a pcl injury if on 90 degrees uh, the uh, dial test becomes normal then he has an isolated plc injury so the first two figures they demonstrated a normal dial test and in the last figure it was an abnormal dial test from dial test we move on to the reverse pivot shift so the reverse pivot shift everything is reverse so the knee is flexed to 90 degrees the external rotation is done then you give a valgus force then you an, you observe an anteromedial translation and then you slowly extend the knee and see the anteromedial translation reducing at 30 degrees because the it band suddenly reduces the knee joint the last and final test which you can do is a posterolateral draw test in which the knee is flexed to 90 degrees and uh, the external rotation is given at the tibia and a posterior draw test is done the results are uh, compared to the opposite normal side and more than uh, 10 mm of a draw test is positive 